Howdy everybody, and welcome back to the Mega Man tutorial. Last time, we set up our display object. Oh, wrong room. There we go. So we can have our master drop in from the top of the room down to the uh, display banner down here. So now that that's taken care of, we are past the easy part of this tutorial. We are now heading into the real meat. So let's get cracking. So let's get started over here. I just want to, since we're going to a new room again, I'm going to go over the room real quick with you. Uh, the room is 4096 by 1884, so it's a very, very big room. And uh, it's actually not as hard to reproduce this room as you might think looking at it, because most of this is just a background. <laughs> I managed to get a background of the entire room. That's why the room is so big for the most part. But it's also that big because, well, it needs to be that big to fit the entire thing in there. Uh, we actually have to go down to our options, windows, <clears throat> and come over to the graphics and make sure you set the texture page size to 4096 by 4096. Because if you don't, you get some really weird uh, graphical anomalies with the uh, room looking like it's super zoomed in and all the pixels are the wrong size and it's really weird and it took me uh, about an hour to figure out oh yeah I need to remember to, to uh, change that option uh, there is a little bit of actual tiling though because the room was designed for uh, <clears throat> the aspect of well not the aspect ratio the uh, Size was originally designed to be a height of 400 and, well, no, not 424, uh, 224 pixels high. So uh, it's missing the top and the bottom row of pixels. And this is, as I explained back in the camera episode, because of the initial limitations of CRT monitors, which would cut off the top and bottom eight pixels of each room. So, uh, yeah, we have this room here all set up, got the tiles in there so that we can uh, get the uh, bottom two rows, uh, bottom and top row uh, showing. And we got a collisions layer, this room boundaries layer, which is an instance layer, and of course instances in general. And uh, you may remember in the uh, Chippendale tutorial, I made a bunch of layers for like pickups and other things I didn't do that on this episode, on this tutorial but you can do that and you can put your pickups for the the uh, power up pickups and uh, you can put a sh uh, you can have a layer for ammo shots so that the uh, ammo that the uh, bullets appear over every other play the players and enemies and so on and so forth you know just however you feel like it uh, let's see, what else do we got here? So uh, we got collisions. And uh, like I said, collisions are all throughout here. These collisions up here are the ceiling specifically for bats. So that the bats have something to grab onto. The player should never be able to jump up high enough to actually collide with these. However, the player can, uh, if he uh, uses the item number two in the video game, which is a floating platform that floats up, he could get up above this, but uh, I don't know if he actually does get up above that or not, or if it automatically uh, drops him back down when he gets up too high. Anyways, that's not important. Collisions are, if we come over here, we have the collision tile set, so we have zero is blank, and that's what most of this stuff is, blanks. One is a solid, two is a platform. As far as it goes, we actually don't use platforms in this game. I don't think Mega Man uses platforms in it. But three is ladders. We have a bunch of ladders right here. So this is tile zero, one, two, and three. Keep that in mind. And also, if we come over to our tile sets, that's our tower. Here we are. Collision tile sets. So, zero, one, two, three. And that is a 16 by 16. And 
but of course the original uh, NES had 8x8 and 8x16 tiles. So actually everything that I do that has 16x16 16 is wrong by definition. And it actually does cause some issues when I'm building the tutorial because I come up with some areas where they do things in 8x8s and I can't fit in the 16x16 16 16 to get it to work sometimes. So I have to work around that. And of course we also have a tile set for Woodman stage if you really feel like tiling the entire thing yourself. All right, so I think that we've overviewed this enough. Uh, this here is just a reproduction of the boss room. The boss room is actually over here. Uh, I don't know why they had this in here. It was just part of the, uh, the uh, background when I downloaded it. So, yeah, I think everything's covered. Let's get started on uh, doing something interesting. So we can close our rooms for the most part. We'll still keep this open because we'll need to work on it. But, but open our objects, come over to room objects. We're gonna create our first room object for the uh, room room. Let me open up the code over here. Objects, room objects, and object stage start. Jam score stage underscore start and miscellaneous. We'll give it go as the uh, sprite. It's not really important what you give it. We'll drag a copy of this onto our instance layer. I actually made this really really big. That way I can actually see what the hell I was, where it is. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to figure out where it's at, because we actually can drag the, we can actually drag this around, and we will actually be using it for uh, the uh, for uh, stage uh, progress saving when you uh, die and you have to go back to some extent. It doesn't send you all the way back to the start of the stage. It sends you back to wherever your last stage progress save was. So we'll be moving it around for that as well. But uh, it determines where Mega Man will actually spawn when you start up the stage. So I actually want to make sure I get this in the right place. There we go. 128.0. So that's the center of the screen. And we're going to need some events here. Go create, step, draw, and we're not actually going to put anything in here. We're just going to put in a don't draw me because we are just making this so we don't accidentally draw this object. But we do have draw GUI. And last but not least, user event zero. And let's transition inwards so we can actually see what we're doing here. Come back to the create event and start throwing down some code. Ooh, that's actually something really important here. So uh, var underscore instance is equal to instance for place x y object room underscore boundaries. And we need to make this object here. So just over in room objects, create obj underscore room underscore boundaries. And we're going to give it a sprite miscellaneous sprite room boundaries, which is this 256 by 240 tile. And why do we have this? Because we are going to throw these things in as a passive. They don't do really much of anything, but they do define room boundaries. So drag it all the way out here to that point, and just for good measure, drag in a second one, as you can see right there. 
Well, that's more because I don't have the grid size set to 16 by 16 then because of my setup. There we go. Yeah, we'll need this here and this here for later on. And we'll bother putting in the rest of the room boundaries later on. And then for now, you can just trim that back off. And you can ignore this. Don't need to worry about that anymore, I think. I don't think there's any code involved with it. Check, yeah. No code, just a, a collision object for checking, for making sure that our camera stays inside of our room. And it's the main reason why we have it is so that we can do those uh, sliding room transitions. So our camera knows where the room boundaries are and where it's going to move towards. Camera underscore x underscore is equal to underscore ints dot x. Cam underscore y underscore is equal to underscore ints dot y. So that gives us the, it'll give us this uh, zero zero right there. And we want to set object underscore camera dot x equal to cam underscore x underscore object underscore camera dot y is equal to cam underscore y underscore and of course could have set all this stuff just directly but it I could have just cut out this uh, variable middleman game but I didn't for whatever reason object underscore camera dot state underscore is equal to cam underscore mode dot targeted and object underscore camera dot target underscore is equal to ID. So we want to set our camera to the targeted state and tell it that it wants to follow this uh, room start object. The reason why we want to follow the room start object is because that'll be where the uh, Mega Man shows up anyways. And uh, we'll change that pretty much as soon as we spawn Mega Man anyways. So we're also going to Q underscore new song, music underscore wood underscore man underscore stage, and one and false. And in a more complete game, you would encase this in like a switch statement where it would check what room you're in and change what music it's going to start playing based on whatever room you are in. Terminal underscore speed underscore is equal to 16. Terminal underscore is equal to negative 1. And a spawn underscore x underscore is equal to x. Spawn underscore y underscore is equal to y for where we're going to spawn in our Mega Man object. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Let's see, we need to set up the targeted state in our camera object, but let me make sure there, how much uh, code there is in here. So let's go over to the step event real quick. If room does not equal room underscore wood underscore man underscore stage, instance underscore destroy. I don't really think that's necessary. I made that mostly because I wanted to Oh wait, yes, actually it is necessary. We set it to persistent here. The reason why we set this to persistent is because this object contains information about where you're, uh, whenever you uh, reach a uh, save point, it changes its position and then spawns Mega Man into that new position. So if you restart the room because you had to continue then we want to make sure that uh, it actually uh, you not not because we continue because you die because uh, if you restart the room we want to make sure that uh, you this that Mega Man spawns at the right position yeah but we don't want to we don't want this object to exit the Woodman stage so. Uh, we would just uh, destroy it if we're ever outside of the Woodman stage. Timer underscore plus plus, and if timer underscore is equal to sec times two, then we are going to instance underscore create underscore layer, spawn underscore x underscore, spawn underscore y underscore, Instances, object underscore 
probably porting in underscore mega underscore man. And we haven't created that object yet either, right? So we'll get into that too. We'll have to do that too. And last but not least, user event zero. We just want to set our, uh, actually, we can just kind of copy and place, copy this for the most part. Don't even need that. Just need to set camera to underscore cam x, cam y, and state to free. And play the music. This is so that whenever we uh, die, it'll restart our music. And uh, well, not restart our music, but uh, whenever the room restarts, it'll. We uh, let's see. It's when you get to a. Uh, When you get to a save point, you update your X position and your Y position. The, the uh, save point updates these variables and the camera mode is set to free because you need to move the camera around. That's why. Whenever you, uh, whenever you, uh, if you die. Because it's also used there. Yeah. I'll probably come back to this later on. I think I made this more complicated than it should have been. Anyways, so we'll come back to that when we actually get to the point to set up the uh, save points. I think that's everything into our start object. And we are at 16 minutes in, so let's come back to our camera. So open up your camera object. And we have the follow state. targeted state, follow state, whatever you want to call it. And again, this is another instance of me making this more complicated than I really need to, I bet. This could have been done simpler, but. Okay, so if our target exists, then actually do stuff. So var underscore x is equal to our target underscore dot x minus view underscore width underscore divided by two. So that gets our target's position. And if instance underscore exists, So uh, we want to, if there's room boundaries, follow the room boundaries instead of our target. to the top of the uh, room boundary and of course clamp ourselves to the room all right so uh, yeah if uh, the target exists and if there is a room boundary, then find the ceiling, stick to the ceiling, and find our target's X position and stick to that X position but within the room boundaries, plus one. Else var underscore y is equal to target underscore dot y minus view underscore height divided by two. All right. 
underscore x is equal to clamp underscore x zero room underscore width minus view underscore width and this is a room clamp rather this is a room room clamp rather than room boundary clamp Last but not least, just position the camera. There we go. So that's your camera updated with a follow uh, state. And that's all we have time for. So let's close all this stuff up and let's get around to, I'll, I would test this out for everybody, but unfortunately we need to have that other object, the uh, teleporting in Mega Man before I try to test it out. Otherwise nothing really interesting will happen. Oh wait. I forgot to draw a GUI. Uh, let's do this. This should be quick. Center, middle, white. When the interval hits, draw text ready to the middle of the GUI. All right, that's simple, easy to do. All right, good. Okay, so save up our projects, and uh, thank you everybody for joining me. It's time to thank our Patreon sponsors. All right, thank you very much again, Fragile Hearts, through Patreon, Damien and Kenneth Klein for all your contribution. Your uh, support greatly heartens me. And uh, just until next time then, thank you everybody for coming and good luck with your programming.